The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, uh, for the most part, if you're a Wyckoff trader, it is a retest of Friday's low. And uh, I'm going to figure that you need about 15 billion shares to blow out today's low. Uh, anything above a, a close on the S&P cash of 54.85 is a uh, probably a buy signal for the rest of the year. We still have, uh, what, uh, two hours left to go, a little under two hours left to go. And we'll see how that comes in. But uh, I have already uh, picked up a position. Um, hopefully the email's coming out. I think we had some problems with it. Maybe it's out already. Uh, but uh, check the front page of T your web pa uh, page if you uh, are a subscriber to the path of least resistance. Uh, but that's it. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, sticking my neck out too far between now and the end of the year. Uh, if I'm going to get into something, it's going to be with options. And uh, the reason why? Well, I'm going to limit my exposure in case anything really bad happens. It hadn't happened already, but uh, we shall see. But, uh, yeah, I bought some uh, calls for Friday. And as long as we uh, close uh, up above uh, 45.85 in the next couple of days, that's kind of the line in the sand for what we're going to be looking at. So, um, I want to uh, bring up something that I learned very often, or very early, I should say, from Tim Ord. And he would repeat this a lot, and he said, high volume lows are not lows until they've been retested. And I said that to myself about 100 times, only uh, it took about 100 times to actually get it through my head. So I didn't jump on uh, yesterday's big move higher. Uh, suspecting that we would come back. And I thought yesterday morning it would just come back, retest on a lighter volume, and then we'd go higher. Well, it didn't. Everybody had to get all hot and bothered. They had to get all lathery. They had to get uh, all, uh, I can't use that word. Anyway, uh, they had to get all fired up. And I think today is the day that they're going to get uh, shaken out. Now, do I think this is an entire market thing? The answer is no. It's all about picking the right sectors and the stocks in those sectors if you can. But uh, I think that there's at least a couple of sectors that look uh, like they're probably on the green light till the end of the year if this is a low. If not, uh, we'll take a small loss and move on. But my guess is, uh, uh, like I said, anything above uh, 54.85 and you're off to the races, Anything above 4,600, and you probably have a nice uh, Christmas rally coming. And is it going to exceed what we had before? Probably not. Is it going to make some decent money if you're in the right stocks? Probably. But um, there's a few things going on uh, with the Fed and others. But I think what they're trying to do is wrench some of the excesses out of the market that they haven't uh, to this point. Um, all I hear is we've got this uh, new thing, and this new thing, we don't know anything about it, and it could be a problem. Uh, it could be much worse, but, you know, we don't even have it here in the United States to study it. So we don't know, but it might be. Um, kind of just reminds me a lot of after 9-11, uh, uh, everything, uh, someone would leave a ham sandwich out on a bench and everybody would freak out about it. The market would dip 50 points uh, in a heartbeat in the S&Ps. That was back then. And uh, two days later, it was all gone. And uh, in the chat rooms at that time, we'd always say someone found another ham sandwich. 
And that's kind of what it was. So, yeah, can we still get that? We can. Uh, options are pretty cheap still to this point for calls. So if you want to play the long side, not a bad time to get uh, set up with those. I think that there's some decent movement. And, of course, we got fun buying. We also have something that a lot of people have been talking about, and that is tax selling. Now, 80, 85% of tax selling every year is by the professionals on Wall Street. Their tax season is over today. So I think a lot of people, especially if you're a fund manager, knowing that that kind of selling is coming in, um, a lot of people would think, well, you know what? We'll just buy it as they're selling it. No, nay, nay, I say, I say that what we're really doing is uh, they're going to wait until everybody's done selling and then they're going to start buying. They're not going to boost the prices up for too much before tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. Uh, 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 somebody in the den says that. I like Rick Santelli's approach. Powell did the exact right thing today. Established the hard line when there's a real risk. And then have a position to back away from if the risk materializes. Um, yeah, I think now that he knows that he's good for another couple of years, he's going to uh, make sure that uh, he's going to stomp out uh, uh, frothiness before it gets too far. Uh, and that's a bit. So, you know, if you're a company that desperately needs money uh, and has to borrow it at a bank, your interest rates are going to go up. If uh, you got people wanting to throw money at you, a completely different story. And I had this uh from uh, the last, last uh, a secret recording from the last Fed meeting. And I always thought uh, this was so apropos. Are you suggesting we throw money at the problem? Precisely. That's it. That is the, the exact uh, motus operandi for the Fed and everybody else. We're just going to throw money at any problem we see. Uh, but, uh, you know, he said some other things that, were probably along the lines of now that he said it, the probably the low is in uh, with uh, saying that uh, there continues to be shipping problems. Well, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm shocked there's gambling in Casablanca. Um, generally, when everybody starts talking about it, it's almost over. So I'm thinking that uh, there's enough pressure uh, we've started to see, uh, like, gasoline prices will probably come down now. Um, they were artificially high for a while because everybody thought that uh, it was just one more uh, pipeline closure away from having no gas to anybody. Uh, but uh, eh, politicians eventually uh, will start going after the leader with pitchforks if they know they're not going to get elected. And I think that's what we started to see over the last week. Um, went out for uh, to pick up some lunch real quick. Uh, no sign that uh, any of the people at the gas pumps found ladders uh, to bring the gas price down. Still uh, 3.30 here in the uh, free state of Florida in Clearwater. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Turn, uh, of course, uh, always a little history, and then we'll get into some charts I've been looking at. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. As we said, on this day in 1959, IBM delivers the first two, uh, eight computers, first two. I don't know what happened there. It's supposed to be uh, mainframe computers. Uh, one of the first commercially produced fully trans, uh, uh, transistorized computer, the 7090 and later the 7904. We don't want to confuse the two. We're notably for being used for controlling the Mercury and Gemini space flights, along with many other significant and government applications in the 60s. Some 7090s were even used through the 1970s and even into the 1980s. And that was the first mainframe I ever got to play with. Uh, as they were getting ready to decommission one. Uh, so I learned a lot about uh, how the big iron is what they used to call it, uh, the mainframes. Uh, the one that uh, I played with weighed, I think, 6,000 pounds with all the peripherals and stuff. Uh, it took up, of course, a fairly large 40 by 40, maybe 40 by 30 room. It's pretty large, had to be air conditioned uh, and cooled. Uh, they had water chillers and all that other stuff. But, uh, yeah, mainframes. Uh, before networking, you really don't hear the word mainframe anymore. Before networking, you kind of had to have everything in one box. You had to have all the memory. You had to have all the processors. Now, uh, with uh, almost uh, terabit uh, speed uh, uh, Ethernet on the horizon, uh, certainly even on desktop computers, you're getting uh, Thunderbolt connections now. Uh, which are absolutely incredibly fast. Um, you don't really need mainframes anymore. It's banks of computers with parallel processing. So they've kind of gone a little bit uh, the way of the dodo, although IBM still sells what they call mainframes. But uh, on this day in 1959, they're really the first com uh, uh, transistorized computers come out that, that will work uh, well. Uh, that could actually do something and not just uh, for uh, research or playing with until they get to it. Uh, but uh, mainframes were really the kind of 
uh, product for uh, many years that did all the billing for uh, the phone companies and the electric companies and everybody else. And, of course, they were made to do one job, and they didn't change a lot uh, until they were forced to. But, uh, hey, no charts. Huh. How could you actually do that? I'm actually showing I do have a chart. Let's do this. Do I have a chart now? Hopefully you say yes. Because I thought everybody would be tickled by this thing. Um, I before E, except when your foreign neighbor, Keith, receives eight counterfeit uh, beige sleighs from a weird, feisty, caffeinated weightlifter. I love it. We're going to go to uh, Scott in Denver for uh, uh, Alibaba. How you doing, Scott? Well, I'm doing fine. How are you this morning? Uh, another day in paradise. It's going to be 76 tomorrow and sunny. So I am set. It's going to be. It's cold today. Only going to hit a high of 73. So uh, we're we're moving <laughs> along. <laughs> well, good for you. I was hoping that you could take a look at that Alibaba chart for me. Okay. So go ahead. What are you What are you thinking? Well, how far down is this thing going to go? Um, you know, everybody's trying to get out of China for a variety of reasons, right? Yeah. Okay. So when does that change? Does uh, yeah. Is uh, Jamie Dimon right? Will uh, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley outlie, outlive the Ch uh, Chinese Communist Party? Never happened. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, as long, I mean, there were three more things that happened this week, and I want to bring up. I think one was uh, a company uh, is a website Ten Cents or something. Ten Cent, uh, who does a lot of. I'm pretty sure it was Ten Cent. It does a lot of apps for phones. Uh, we're told that they can't kick out any new apps for all the. Uh, uh, Chinese that want apps for their smartphones uh, without getting pre-approved by the Chinese Communist Party. So, you know, uh, are you long this thing, kind of stuck in it? No, I just have a put that uh, I'm short on. So essentially, yeah, I'm long in some ways. Yeah. I I think you're going to get be able to get it one day. <laughs> um, I just don't see a lot of reasons out here now. Um, we were talking about a few things that uh, I love trading the stuff that uh, is more organic to the market, like uh, options, expiration, stuff that I know happens, fun buying, uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. And one of the things you have to look at is if you're in a downtrend now, it is fairly rare to uh, – to, uh, find that reversed before the beginning of the year. But stocks that have the biggest downtrends uh, tend to have the uh, biggest bounces after January 5th. So when you're asking me how far it goes, I don't know. Uh, when is probably a better question, and that's the first of the year. You know, there may be something that comes out of this, but uh, the more that, that uh, Chinese threaten um, everybody, in fact, I think it was a day before yesterday, maybe last, if maybe on Friday, uh, the military said that they're going to probably double the spending on uh, the bases at uh, Diego Garcia and Okinawa uh, to go against the threat. But China is every day threatening to nuke either Australia or Japan or South Korea or something, and they continue to be uh, uh, more authoritarian and totalitarian on their own uh, folks. So I don't know. Um, when is that going to turn around? They did very well because they went with the uh, capitalist society. Uh, now they're backtracking on a lot of that, and I think they continue to go lower until they figure out that, uh, eh, Having jobs and uh, everything else is great. Of course, they're all about being and controlling, so that becomes a pro uh, you know a kind of a problem for them. But I think it's 
not so much an issue uh, with the company as uh, if I was in anything from China, I'd have to be in uh, options. I wouldn't want to have uh, a lot of exposure to the downside in case they do something even more stupid than threatening to nuke everybody on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. I was just curious with that. Anything to tell me from looking at the chart? Um, let's go back here a little bit farther. Why you hang on just a second? Sure. And we'll talk more about it on the other side. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back with uh, Scott uh, in Denver. Uh, we're looking at uh, some fairly long-term uh, pictures of Alibaba. And you've really just gone to this gap uh, that is extended back uh, to uh, June 8th of 2017. And the downside on that gap was 125.64. Um, you're almost to that right now. So you're about the best support you're going to get. 
So if it goes any lower, that's just it. You've already blown through really the last one under 130 that had 25 million shares. You already have uh, 25 million shares already today. So it doesn't look good. Um, did have a question uh, from one of our gentle uh, uh, listeners about if this is a double repo pattern on the way back down. And it, it is. It's not a textbook one, uh, but it gives you kind of an idea what I look for. And that is a bunch of days on the way up, generally 10 to 15, handful of days that close below, a three by three, a handful of days above. And then you get a candle that goes through the three by three very sharply. The next day is the uh, clincher out here uh, with a huge gap down. And that's generally how those double repo patterns uh, kind of work. So, you know, you kind of want to watch... Uh, out here, but you're, you're probably about as good as it's going to get for support. So I don't know what you want to do, but right underneath that would be the next stop because uh, underneath that, I think, is 85. <laughs> okay, good to know. I, I appreciate you looking at that. Hey, I mean, can you look at one more chart with me? Sure. S T N E. Stone, what do these guys do? I think they're IT services down in South America. Ah, Coconut Telegraph. <laughs> okay, Stone. Uh, financial technology solutions to merchants and integrated partners to conduct electronic commerce uh, across in-store, online, and mobile channels in Brazil. Uh, yeah. so I don't know. Okay. Seems rather limited, doesn't it, to just one company? I mean, one country? Yeah, yeah but, it does. Uh, yeah, seems rather limited. Uh, of course, uh, what language do they speak in Brazil? You got me. Is it Spanish, Portuguese? I don't know. Portuguese. So... You got a technology company that literally has two markets, Brazil and Portugal, <laughs> for a language. Uh, so what are you thinking out here? That uh, they're going to branch out into English or something? I don't <laughs> I guess I, don't I was understand. just hoping you could look at the chart and tell me support, next support. Do you see any, any stopping this thing? On the downside. Now, I mean, you've already broken through the previous lows that go back to December 24, 2018. Is there anything even farther back than then? I don't see it. I don't think so. No. You know, you've broken through all the lows. I don't, uh, I don't understand the idea of having a tech company trying to uh, go up against a lot of really big companies now, no matter what they're doing, whether it's... Uh, finance or anything else it's very tough to be on your own and if you're on your own and all you do is portuguese you know it's not like there's that much growth past that um but uh the whole thing the stone company doesn't sound like a portuguese uh, brazilian company either so i didn't want to find out more about what's going on in it but uh okay you now I'm not a big fan of either one of these because they're easily, all you got to do is hire a couple of people that speak Portuguese and do whatever you do in the rest of the world in Portugal. You know, maybe you've got, maybe it uh, was made as a company to get a buyout, you know, and get all the people that speak Portuguese there and move your product into it. Maybe that was the whole idea of this thing going to 95 uh, that now that it's 15 was that it was going to be a buyout candidate. But uh, I'd have to research a lot more about why this company is doing so poorly um, other than the given that, you know, things aren't going well in Brazil. But with uh, crude prices higher, they should have actually turned this thing around a bit and have not. So none of that's good. I don't like the limited exposure uh, without 
deep diving into the company. I don't like the the uh, limited exposure to a single language. If they were Spanish, uh, then they could go, you know, what to about a third of the planet, maybe a fourth. I don't know what the, but it's probably close to that, right? So yeah. Anyway. Not a big fan when I look at it uh, from the 30,000-foot view. Gotcha. I tell you what brought this to my attention. I think Berkshire Hathaway at one point owned a uh, percentage of this company. Yeah, it looks like they got out. (laughs) I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for the call. Yeah, appreciate it, Dave. You bet. Okay, uh, question earlier... uh, uh, what's the point of uh, big tech uh, with the uh, uh, Chinese government? Um, I don't know. They've bought everybody, including some senators, uh, some sons of the highest ranking uh, officer in the country. You, it's not a day that you don't go by and find out more of that stuff. Um, I don't think they, quote, quote, uh, have anybody that's a member here in the United States. Uh, just people that are going along to get along. I do have to uh, give a, a nod of the head, a tip of the hat uh, to the one NBA player who's calling everybody out on uh, supporting uh, uh, companies like Nike who use slave labor in China. Um, but to me, it just smacks of a great deal of uh, when uh, we have dealt with other uh, big things in the past, World War II, there were all kinds of people trying to sell stuff to the Nazis. IBM was one of the biggest ones. They almost went under on that. If we didn't need them for the war, I think they would have gone under. Um, other big uh, folks, uh, uh, what was the guy that, uh, Lindbergh, uh, he, he was kind of the uh, Michael Jordan of his time, still right up into the war. But uh, he was a big Nazi promoter, and that cost him just about everything. Um, He ended up uh, flying uh, and teaching people to fly uh, during the war effort and kind of rehabilitated himself. But I think there are a lot of people, uh, long term, that are on the wrong side of history uh, backing uh, communism. And I think eventually it all works out uh, in the wash. But... uh, not all the time uh, is it going to be for the good. We'll be back. Er, yeah, Ernest Cantor Freedom. Yeah. We'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. As we return, uh, we've got uh, an email from Wayne who asks, uh, BNTX, what are my thoughts on this? You're in an uptrend, uh, even with the worst things that happen. It has not uh, violated that uptrend. Uh, if you're long this thing, you stake it. Uh, you, you stay on it. Uh, if it breaks below the three by three or nine day, then you're probably out. But uh, down today on about half the volume of two days ago. Uh, that's Friday if you live in Lutz, Florida. So uh, if you live in the rest of free Florida, then you don't need to know that. Anyway, uh, half the volume on a pullback here. And I think this thing looks like it's headed back to 464. Um, it's hitting against resistance right now. Uh, but uh, if it can break through... I think you're going back up to the highs. I don't know what they do or a lot about them, but there's nothing in here uh, that says even on a horrible day um, that there's a lot of selling in it. Uh, but you do have a big problem there at 380, 370 uh, with the existing uh, folks that want to get their cash back. Uh, but uh, you break through that, you got 464. Okay, another question uh, from uh, Mimi about... Uh, the TLT, um, is it going higher? I suspect not, but that is uh, a preposition uh, or prepositioned on uh, the market going higher right now and sucking some of that money back in. We need to close above uh, 4585, uh, and we're around there right now in the last tick. So the question is whether or not we can close up today. Uh, but that would uh, that would be interesting. But uh, the Fed has pushed more cash in the last four days than they ever have. At the same time, they're telling everybody that there's a problem and to be worried. So, and they're gonna and they're gonna taper. So they're doing one thing on one hand and doing something else on the other hand. So, which is the truth? Well. Every time before they folded like a five dollar, uh, like a five dollar uh, suitcase, um, they folded quickly. Is what I'm trying to say. So, uh, you know what? My guess is that uh, some of that money comes out of the bonds that goes back into the uh, markets. But we'll know today or tomorrow. But I don't see a lot out here in some sectors that says that uh, even if the, the S and P does pull back. Uh, there's a lot of downside after today. Again, a lot of good features uh, for saying that the risk reward does not get any better here. One, you're done with the tax selling season. You're done with uh, the uh, bonus season uh, for uh, uh, Wall Street. You've got maybe some folks that do some tax selling uh, on the uh, retail side. 
but uh, if you're doing well, I don't see that there's that much out here that says that the last month of the year uh, is going to be a problem. Now, China invades Taiwan. You know, not a, un, un, you know, do I give it a high probability uh, over 10 percent? The answer is no. But probably I had it at 5 percent before. So maybe seven and a half percent. So I'm going up a little bit on my Bayesian interpretation of the odds. Um, you know, we got uh, uh, an unfull moon, a dark moon, a new moon is what they call it. And that's uh, just in a handful of days. If they're going to do anything, that'll be it. Um, maybe everybody thinks that's going on. Maybe the everybody thinks the Russians are going to invade the Ukraine after we didn't do anything last time. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that could go on that could blow this up. As I said, if I was going to be long or short in this market, I think the only prudent thing is to be using options. If they're too expensive, move along and find something else. Uh, but uh, the easiest way to limit the huge swings that we're getting, 60, 70, 80, 90 points in the S&P, uh, is to go to the options so you know uh, what your limit is going in. 877-927-6648. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you think they're really going to want to uh, all get uh, in front of this for uh, the Olympics? Eh, I don't think so. I think they want to, they'll probably wait until after it if they w are going to do anything. So, again, I'm thinking there's a lot of worries, a lot of different stuff. Uh, people are sounding alarm on stuff that they have no idea of happening. And I think there's a lot of reasons uh, that that is. That is that, uh, you know, especially as I've been calling it lately, the uh, vaccine industrial complex. I think there's a lot of folks out there that still want to squeeze some money out of the government. Uh, there's a lot of money to be made. And that doesn't always end up in being the truth imparted to the people getting uh, those vaccines uh, and, the necess uh, and the need to get them. I um, heard somebody say something, was it today or yesterday? He said, uh, two years ago, three years ago, CDC said something. I would have just taken it to the bank. But today, yeah, there's a lot of reasons for them to figure out uh, and for the stuff they say. And maybe it's not as good as it was uh a few years ago. So I'm kind of in that camp of uh, a more Missourian now. You got to show me uh, the data. And when you say it's going to take 50 years to get the data uh, to you so you can look at it, yeah, I wonder what's underneath the hood of that automobile. Uh, I'm, I'm going to mix some metaphors here. Buying a pig in a poke. And I bet most people don't know what buying a pig in a poke is, but that's Buying it in a burlap bag. And uh, we'll see that. 877-927-6648. You still got time to email me. Uh, anyway, TLT, it's all about the close today. If uh, we blow out 30 points lower or something, um, then, yeah, you could blow out uh, 156 in the TLT. My belief is that the reason that they put all that cash into the market the last well, really starting last Wednesday, uh, was to have a lot of this cash uh, so people could buy the dips. And right now, still kind of hanging out in the, in the bond market. But as that, uh, if you see the TLT start heading down a little bit, that means probably there's cash coming out and that's going to go into the equities and probably into the equities that everybody knows the best. And, of course, there's not uh, one that is more than a, a bigger shining city on the hill uh, than Apple on a day like this, which is still higher. Uh, it's retesting the previous high, and the volume is not that bad. 117, 117 million. We got 107 already. So, uh, again, a Apple Christmas, I think, is what a lot of people are betting on from Best Buy. It's not going to help Best Buy, but it's... Uh, uh, buy those earbuds. That's what Apple is talking about. Buy a new iPhone. They want. Back.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, we get ready to uh, wrap up another wonderful, exciting power trading hour. And of course, uh, We'll watch and see how the close comes in. I am, I'm not outrageously bullish, but I do think that we are probably going higher in the short term. Uh, really bring in uh, fund buying tomorrow in earnest, uh, exiting uh, tax selling for the uh, street guys uh, whose taxable year ends today. Uh, we've got some other stuff going on. We've got the Fed shoving more money in this market than ever. Uh, if it does turn around, we're probably going to have a fairly a uh, quick and sharp move higher uh, over the next few days, probably sparked by some of that fund buying. So, you know, next week could be uh, I'm wearing a frown. Uh, this week I'm trying to turn that frown upside down. I think the market probably has a couple of days. Maybe we don't get what we want, but it's probably as close to a free roll the next two or three days with all the cash coming in. Fun buying, everything else, probably the worst, maybe a little down, uh, probably the best, a whole lot higher. So we'll see how uh, today ends up. But, you know, you got a lot of signs that uh, either today or tomorrow uh, are lows in this market. Um, so we'll, we'll see that. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Volume's pretty good, about 9 billion shares. But again, it's not going to be 15 billion shares at the end of the day. It's going to be probably 11 or 12. We had nine on a half day 
on Friday. So if you extended that out to like 15, we're probably going to come in with lighter volume uh, for a comparison from Friday on just the amount of hours we came out with. Uh, but again, we pushed down. There's enough stocks out here without volume. Um, this is the retest. So we'll probably know fairly quickly. This is not something you got to hang around a long time. It's either going to retest and do well or it's going to fail. Uh, that's pretty much it. So when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. <laughs>